Hi, it's Mick Fakula. We're going to take a few minutes here to introduce the topic of strategy and what it's all about in the context of this course. We'll cover these areas, what it is, the general definition and operations versus strategy view of the world. Minsberg has five P's. Uh, we have a white uh, cultural notion of strategy. Talk about the purpose of strategy, an example from my hometown, and then a template for analysis of it all. Uh, first of all, what is strategy? This is the simplest and most elegant definition, the alignment of the organization with its environment. It's not real specific, uh, but it really captures what strategy is all about. Three other perspectives follow. The first one is the strategic versus operations view of strategy. And here we're basically saying that within that circle, we have a lot of business functions, and those are operational areas with the exception of the middle function, which is business planning and strategy itself. When we draw a circle around that and we call it the environment, we're concerned about strategic issues uh, with regard to a business or organization. So everything is of concern when it's operating within the environment as opposed to a particular function, which we could just call an operational concern. <clears throat> Next, we have a guy named Mintzberg who came along with what he called the five P's for strategy. You may have heard of the four P's in marketing. These are the five P's for strategy, and their definitions follow. A plan, and I won't read all these, but it gives you the definition of what they are, a pattern. And this is interesting because it basically talks about the idea of strategy emerging from what a company does over time as opposed to stemming from a particular plan. A ploy is the idea that we engage in a tactic which someone else responds to, another competitor and so forth, that we try to outwit. Position is a big one, and Porter is very big on this one in particular when you get into reading the book about his information strategies. Position is important. important. And then finally, uh, perspective. How do we look at ourselves with regard to the strategy we're engaged in, and how do we interpret the environment around us? Okay, Carl Weick, his culture notion. This is a behavioral view of the world. And he basically looked at an article and he said, this came out of a published article. And we've eliminated here uh, the first word of every sentence. And the options are for the first word to be strategy or culture. And if we look at the sentences, the first one says evolves from inside the organization, not its environment. A deeply ingrained continuing pattern in the second one there. The third one, a non-rational concept. Uh, stemming from values, traditions, etc. Uh, and then finally emerges out of cumulative effects of many informed actions and decisions. Now, obviously, people would say that that has to do with organizational culture. But as he points out in the article that he took it from, it's a strategic management article in which these were written. And the author indicates that all of these types of concepts are strategy. Uh, so, I guess the conclusion we want to come to is that strategy is just not one particular thing in the mind of one particular person, but it means a variety of things to uh, people in general. The purpose of strategy, we've got the fit issue up at the top, the competitive advantage uh, issue at the bottom. These things are called moderators. They impact what would happen in the situation. We develop a strategy and we say the purpose of strategy is to uh, increase or enhance performance of an organization. Again, as moderated by uh, how the organization fits into the situation and what the organization's competitive advantage is. But ultimately, you want to say to yourself, making a strategy is all about trying to perform well in that context. Okay, what is strategy? According to Michael Porter, we're going to read his book. And the book is not actually written by him, but it's written by an associate who knows his ideas very well, and it condenses his ideas, uh, which are very voluminous, written across thousands of pages, and she does a great job of doing that. I will not play this video right now. You can play it at your leisure. It's only about three or four minutes. There's a link in the left column in Blackboard, and then also it'll be within this PowerPoint presentation that you can access uh, on your own time and look at what strategy is all about. I do want to point out for you that on page 219 of the Michael Porter book written by Joan Magretta, there is a definition of strategy which exists in a glossary of his key concepts. 
So I want you to know at the beginning of reading that book that there's a glossary that explains all the terms so you don't get too bogged down in trying to remember exactly what he means by a particular term. So there he explains uh, what strategy is from his perspective in a paragraph or so. Okay, I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. The Bethlehem Steel Company <coughs> went out of business, uh, declared bankruptcy around 2001. Uh, my dad was a long time employee of Bethlehem Steel, retiring in the late 1980s. By 2001, he lost his entire retirement, no income, because the company went completely under. There was no money to pay for that. Along the way in the 1980s, the local newspaper editor, his name is John Strohmeyer, write that book, uh, wrote that book called Crisis in Bethlehem. And he indicated at that point in time the kinds of problems the steel company was having and the trouble they were headed for. Uh, if you read that book, you find out that the executives in charge at the time did not have any effective strategy whatsoever. They totally disregarded the environment in which steel was operating worldwide at that time. They literally state in the book that they were making money, profits were good, so why should they change anything that they were doing? And subsequently, the company did go out of business for various reasons, uh, a few of which are foreign competition and the prices that uh, competitors were able to come in with that were much lower than American steel companies. Labor unions were at issue, but ultimately the management in place at the time was at fault for not having a strategic view of the process. Hope is not a strategy. Don't hope that something's going to work out. Our proposal in this course is to give you the tools to come up with a strategy that will be effective and one that you know will be effective, such that you do not have to hope it's going to work. Let me back up there. Uh, here's another video, which again, I won't play at this time, but Howard Schultz talks about why growth is not a strategy for a company. We naturally assume that growth is a good idea and we should pursue that. He points out the idea that growth is an outcome. So a good strategy, according to Porter, produces a return on invested capital, which is excellent. A good strategy, according to Howard Schultz, is that growth occurs uh, as a result of it, uh, not because strategy is the uh, move that's oriented toward growth. Doing things the right way results in good outcomes. And again, take opportunity to read that or uh, watch that video uh, as time allows for you. Okay, Michael Porter. I want to point this out because if you look at the date, 2003, he came to South Carolina. And his perspective had a lot to do with the ideas that he extrapolated to not only companies, but countries around the world. So South Carolina brought him in and said, how can we as a state, as opposed to a business, let's say, how can we as a state become more competitive in the world with regard to what we do? And they used his ideas and uh, assessed how that you know, would all work out if they adopted his perspective on strategy to help the state out. I've never been able to follow up to see what actually happened as a result of that, but I thought it was interesting that Carolina brought him in to do that. With regard to his value, at this point in time, he would have gotten paid seventy dollars or $80,000 to come and talk for an hour uh, 15 years ago. So that was his rate. Again, he's one of the most uh, successful and premier business professors uh, ever to live, actually. Okay, we'll get to this template at some point in time, but I want you to know what's happening ahead of time with regard to strategy. So we look at an industry that a company operates in. We talk about vital issues. We look at dominant economic features. We consider performance differences between terms. Remember the term performance with regard to strategy. We ask what factors explain the differences. Why do some companies do better than others? And is there any other information that makes a difference? We'll get into something called Porter's Five Forces model and very much apply his ideas right there. And then we'll talk about strategic groups in the context of Porter. He'll mention those as well. We'll talk about competencies, core and distinctive competencies in companies. And then the idea of sustaining competitive advantage. How do you create something that someone else cannot imitate easily, that's valuable in the market, that's rare, and then finally non-substitutable? If something ends up being substitutable, then it loses its competitive advantage. So that's why all of these become important. So over the years, I put this together as a model that really captures what the strategic management perspective is all about. Okay, as we look into the next couple of weeks uh, and this week, 
you want to set up the Globus a business simulation game, get that up and running, and then also read ahead. There's not a lot of reading assigned this week, but there is a lot in the future weeks. With regard to the books that we are uh, reading, they're not textbooks in the sense that you'll be tested on all the different terms and information in the books. Uh, they're books that you should find uh, interesting and uh, worthwhile reading. Uh, and they're the kind of thing that you may want to keep on your bookshelf for the future. Okay, thanks for your attention.